Hello, hello, hello. It's Chris Petrie here. Hey, everybody. Thanks for coming by. You know what? We're going to have a great time today. We're going to have a fantastic time. We're going to do additional paints that we use outside our normal palette. So you might all have your standard palette that you use. I have my standard palette that I use. Here I'm going to show you my additional colors that I use when I'm uh, working in watercolor. Some additional colors. They're really exciting, phenomenal colors, but I don't use them all the time. They're not in my palette. Let's say in my the wells of my palette that I'm using all the time, but I sometimes squeeze them out and squeeze them out onto my palette in like a little section over on the side and I might use them or sometimes I'll take a little pan put them inside a pan let me see if I can find a pan around my studio here give me one second I sure do I sure do I have a pan right here look at this I always keep extra plastic pans around like this so what you can do is you can see here these are large pans these are made by Holbein I think, or these are uh, Horadam. Uh, these are uh, Horadam Aquarel Empty Full Pan, set of 10. And you can see these. Let me see if I have a, something dark. I can uh, put this behind. There we go. These are pans. You can buy extra pans online. Holbein makes them. Horadam makes them as well. They come in little plastic bags. You can buy them online. You get like a set of 10. You can see here I have a set of 10 and a little plastic bag. I keep these in my studio. So if I have an extra color I want to add into my uh, palette, let's say I'm going to do like maybe a series of paintings, maybe five paintings, and I want an additional paint color that I don't use on a normal basis, I put some in here use some double stick tape on the back of this and stick it in my watercolor palette and then I have my extra color. And then if I'm done with my five paintings, I may be doing a series of paintings, maybe something I need a, a special color for, then I just take it out and put it, you know, and then put it back in my, uh, in my drawer, in my uh, studio. I have some drawers, some uh, metal drawers that I have. I keep my extra art materials in those drawers. I hope you'll have a little section of your place where you live, where you're, wherever you live, I hope you'll have a little section where you have your watercolor paints, you have your palettes, you keep your brushes, everything in a little small space, whatever space you might have. Maybe you have a large area you can put in, you know, put all your stuff in, all your materials, your art tools and supplies. But I hope you'll have something at least, a little section of your house where it's your art area where you can have your small section. We have some art supplies and you have things stored and then that's your place that you have so you always have that location that you never have to worry about looking all around for things you can always have things stored in one central area maybe it's a small place in the basement or in, in maybe a, a, an extra bedroom spare bedroom or however you want to work but i always hope you'll you'll be able to have that at least something some little small even a bin even a big large plastic bin that you can buy with a lid on it and any kind of your art supplies you can put them all in there put the cover on the bin when you're done painting and when the next time you're ready to paint you can open up your art bin maybe it's like a nice large bin that you can have all your papers paints brushes whatever you need for your art supplies and you can open up that plastic bin and you have all your art supplies right there one place and then you're ready to go and you can start painting and drawing and creating and, and doing your artwork. I hope you'll do that. I hope, you, I hope you'll be very organized with your artwork. That's important with artwork to be organized. If I know when I first started I had my art supplies all over the place. I didn't know where they were. When I went to go paint and draw I said, oh let me go paint and draw. And next thing you know I'm like, oh my paints they're downstairs in the basement and where's my pencils and paper? Oh that's in the attic. And then next thing you know it's taken me an hour to find all my art supplies. Please, please, please. I know I'm doing a video on extra paints that you're going to use in your paintings, but try to have your art supplies organized so that they're in one place most of the time so that when you go to do your artwork, hey, it's it's real simple. You just take everything out from one bin or one little section where you might have a couple file drawers or whatever it is. Oh, please stay organized because it makes it life a lot easier. I hope you're with me on this, okay? All right, we're going to do a whole video on that in the future, but right now, let's get into it. Paints extra paints we're going to add to our 
palette once in a while. Not everyday paints that we use every day are regular palette, but just extras. Okay. And you saw my extra little plastic um, pans here that we have that we can utilize. So the way I organize my paints, I just put them all in two bags, warms and cools. Real simple. Warm paints. All my yellows, reds, browns, those all go in one bag. My other bag, all the cools, blues, greens, purples, all that cool, cool colors in one bag. Two bags. Then I have my third bag, which is my additional colors, and that's what we're going to do today. So I'm hoping you're excited, hoping you're going to get uh, some really interesting information on this video. You're going to see some of these extra colors that I find absolutely phenomenal. A lot of these colors come from like other great artists that I've followed over the years that I noticed they use different colors too. And I say, let me add them into my palette once in a while if I'm going to do a special painting. So we're going to take a break here. I've been covering a lot of different stuff here, rambling on and on and on and on. I hope you'll stick with me here. Please stick with me. And uh, please subscribe too. If you haven't subscribed, right down there on the right hand side, the subscribe button. Yes, please hit that subscribe button. I know many of you, you want to learn about watercolor, whether you just started today or whether you've been painting for a number of years, please subscribe. You'll get all my videos. I do great videos like this, exciting videos where we do something a little different. Most times we're creating paintings, every type of painting you can imagine in watercolor. Okay, watercolor, that's what we do. 100% watercolor. So we'll do boats, we'll do seascapes, landscapes, flowers, still life, all these great paintings we do every week. So if you subscribe down there, if you click that button, subscribe, you'll follow us along. And then no matter what videos I'm doing, whether it's flowers or boats or mountains or, you know, flowers, whatever it is, at least you'll watch it and learn the techniques, learn what we're doing here on a week by week basis, video by vi video basis. And if you just stick with this channel and you follow each time we make a new video, and that's why I encourage you to subscribe because each new video, e even if you, if you just watch it full through, you're going to learn new things and it's going to stick. It's going to really become a part of your technique because you're watching it all the time. So if you're watching it and you're hearing it, you're hearing what I'm talking about, you're watching and seeing what I'm doing, it's going to become a part of your technique and you're going to, your watercolor is going to get better. Your paintings are going to look more beautiful, more exciting. And I know that's what you want. And that's why you tune in here every week. Okay. So enough on subscribing and all that good stuff. But I got to tell you, because I want you to keep tuning in and learning all this great stuff that we have here. So, all right, fantastic. We're done. Let's take a break. I'll come right back in just a minute and we're going to go over additional colors that you're going to contemplate adding to your palette or adding to your uh, supply of paints so that once in a while you might need them and might want to use them because I'm going to show you what I use them for each color and how I use them and then you'll maybe be convinced that hey yeah this is something you're going to want to actually keep a couple extra colors around in your studio so that you have them when you need them okay all right let's take a quick break and uh, I just dropped my paint bag here on my toe. I think that's okay. And we'll be right back. Okay. Okay, Chris here. We're back again. We're having fun here in this studio. <laughs> Please have fun with watercolor. Always enjoy it. Have fun with it. We're actually uh, having a great time here. We're sharing our additional colors that we use in watercolor that are not part of our standard palette, but are other colors that we use on occasion depending on where we are, what we're painting, and we'll get into that as we go. So let's let's start out here. Additional colors. I have a separate bag with my additional colors in it, a Ziploc bag. So I just want to share with you how I store my colors. I have a Ziploc bags, and I store those in a Ziploc bag with a little zipper bag here like that. So you can zip the clothes once you're, you put all your colors in there. And again, again, we did, um, we did talk about how I keep my colors very simply organized, warm and cool. So again, we have two bags. I have two bags, warm, reds, yellows, browns, golds here, cool colors, blues, purples, greens. 
So I have two two bags, runs and cools, and I keep all my standard palette colors in two bags. Then, then, uh, then we have an additional bag. That's our additional colors bag. So that's why you have to remember additional colors, and that's all our additional colors, and we put those in that bag. Colors that we don't normally use on a constant basis that are part of our standard palette. You know my standard palette. If you don't know my standard palette, please, let's just, we'll just make sure we, everyone understands I have a standard palette. And all you have to do is just type in Chris Petri Palette. If you type that into YouTube, Chris Petri Palette, with a space in between each word, you'll find that you'll see all my palettes, all my colors, my standard palette. So we're talking additional colors to our standard palette. So my standard palette I cover in those videos. If you just type in Chris Petri Palette, you'll see about 10 or 15 videos. I cover all the ways that I keep my palette uh, as far as keeping the paints moist and fresh, all the colors that I use, the names of the colors that I use, the brands of the colors that I use. You'll see my standard palette that I use continuously all the time on my channel. I don't change my palette around. It's the same for the last five or six, seven years I've been on YouTube. It's the same palette all the time, every time. So that you could type in and you'll find that on YouTube. You'll find 10 videos, watch them all. You'll get tons of information on all my palette colors and what I use. You can also email me. You'll see that in my comments section. You can email me and I'll send you paint charts and whatever you need. And then here we have the extra colors. So that's what we're covering today, the extra colors. So I have a bag with extra colors. Colors I don't use on my normal standard palette, but we're gonna use in special occasions. Let's look at them. So I have just my brush. I have a number four travel brush by Da Vinci Maestro. Da Vinci uh, is the, the name of the, the brush. It's a Kalinske travel brush, Kalinske hair, round brush. You can use any brush you want, round brush, watercolor brush is fine. So we have our brush. Let's get into it. I'm going to go one by one. This might take us five hours to do, but we'll get through it. I know everybody doesn't want to spend five hours doing this. Okay, all right. So we're not going to take five hours, but I'm going to try to go quickly. So there might be some colors in here that have found their way into my extra colors bag that might be ones that we use, actually, in our standard palette. But let's let's ignore that for right now. Let's just start with our, okay, first one, sepia. Extra color, sepia. This one I use, you'll see. Once in a while, I will use sepia, and I might use it for some. I'll just put my tip of my brush in the paint. I might use this for figures. Sometimes I use sepia tone for figure work. I love painting figures. Portraits, figures in sepia tone. There we go. <laughs> I know that looks kind of small. There, we're just trying to, we're going to have need a lot of space here, but I will use sepia by Windsor & Newton for figure work, portrait work, figures, portraits. I, I really tremendously enjoy working with sepia tone by Windsor & Newton. So that's our first one. We'll just put that there. And maybe we're just going to make a little swatch there. All right. Okay, let's do, I'm just grabbing any old paint I can find. 
Okay, let's go with uh, light red. Okay. Light red. I really like doing chimneys. Chimneys look great with light red. It's a brick type color. So I hope you can see this. Some chimney pots. Brickwork, anything brickwork, chimneys, light red is really a great color. Windsor & Newton again. I really enjoy Windsor & Newton paints. I use Windsor & Newton all the time. Okay, so there we go. Windsor & Newton, light red. And we're going to just keep moving along one at a time doing the extra colors that I have in my palette. And you can kind of see as I go, we're just going to do little small swatches of each one and then I'm taking each of these and I'm putting them in the bag as we go so we don't get confused I'm keeping them in the bag okay what else do we have rose matter genuine Windsor and Newton rose matter genuine beautiful flower colors Rinsing off my brush, I'm going to do some flower colors here. And I'm just improving totally here. I'm just improving totally here. Let's make a flower type shape. Rose matter. A couple splashes. Straight rose matter here. I'm going to So we're doing a little flower shape, couple splashes. There we go, look at that. Rose Matter. And I'm hoping you're going to try these colors and pick them up and, and purchase them eventually, maybe one at a time here and there. Um, I'm taking more of that Rose Matter and just kind of... There we go. Flowers, rose matter, beautiful flower colors, very light, it's very transparent. Um, so this is a great extra color to have in your palette. Okay, let's keep going. Um, light red, I already have that one. I have duplicates in here. Uh, let's go with lavender. Lavender is a beautiful color. Uh, this is Holbein. Uh, Holbein is the brand of paint. Lavender. Lavender is a beautiful color for distance. So you can add lavender to like your paintings in some of the distant colors to give yourself some beautiful, cool, distant, chalky looking distant colors with your lavender. Or you can use it ab absolutely for other colors that you might want to make something. And I'm doing just a, like a swatch of, of lavender here. But it's a very light bluish color. And again, you can add that to your distant colors. You can add them to you can add, add lavender to your other colors in your palette to make them look cooler and more distant. So if you're looking at making some distant mountains or some distant buildings in your painting where they're far off in the very, very back of your painting. You add a little bit of lavender to the colors, maybe, of the buildings, and you can create a sense of distance and coolness and atmosphere to your paintings by using a little bit of lavender. So again, lavender, gray color. Holbein makes that. You can get it probably in other brands too. 
just suggestions here. I'm just putting out suggestions of extra colors you might have in your palette. Uh, let's go with, let's see, we have a duplicate there, Rose Matter, Cobalt Violet. Let's try out Cobalt Violet. I have this in my palette, and this is another beautiful flower color. And that's a beautiful violet, very light violet color. Look at that. A beautiful flower color. You could probably work this into again into a distance in your paintings if you're doing some, you want to bring some uh, beautiful, uh, cool, distant colors to your painting. You can add some. Cobalt Violet. This is Windsor & Newton. Cobalt Violet. You could use this for flowers. Some, If you have some beautiful purple, light, very light pastel looking um, purple colors in your flower paintings, you could use that. So both the um, Lavender and Cobalt Violet, which we're using right now. Cobalt Violet these are beautiful pastel looking colors in your paintings for flowers, to add distance to your uh, paintings, to add atmosphere like that kind of misty looking distant colors or again just flower colors, very beautiful light flower colors. Okay, so that's another great extra color to have and we're going to keep going along here. Okay, this one's fantastic. One of my favorites. Windsor & Newton Cold Bowl Turquoise. Tur turquoise is just incredible. Look at that. Wow. That's just really incredible. This is like your um, seascapes, you know, like lots of seascape paintings with turquoise colors. You know, you have the ocean, turquoise colors in the ocean. You have um, boats and uh, you have great scenes with like um, architecture and things along the uh, shore where there's that beautiful, they use that turquoise color for like architecture, for paint on their buildings, houses, hotels, motels, uh, shopping centers, just a great overall cobalt turquoise. Like that. And then a little bit of water and splash. And there you have it. Phenomenal color. And then close to this one is probably, let me see, I think I have another. Let's see if I have another color similar to that. This one too, Cobalt Turquoise Windsor Newton. I think this is the same one. So I have the same. This one's just a little darker. But look at, whoa, look at that. That is just so great. This is, again, Cobalt Turquoise, Windsor Newton. I think this is just a different, uh, this is an older tube of paint. The newer one that I put in the bag here is more recent. So let's see if we have the same thing. Ah, Cobalt Turquoise Light was the top color here. So there we have it. Cobalt Turquoise Light, Windsor & Newton, is the top color uh, above here, lighter in tonal value. It doesn't have as much stronger, darker darks of the tonal value. And then just plain Cobalt Turquoise, Windsor & Newton, that has that darker 
darker look here over here so you can see that there we go look at that two gorgeous colors let's put those aside and let's keep going forward but these are truly great paint colors for your um, seascapes landscapes any kind of boat paintings ocean Okay, let's keep moving along. Oh, here's a great one. Holbein Cadmium Green Pale. Great for trees. Look at that. Wow. Will you look at that? Scrub around when you're doing your swatches like this. Take some of that fresh squeezed tube paint, get it out onto the paper. Look at that. Oh, that looks phenomenal. This is just fantastic. Isn't this great working with colors? Extra colors. That's what our video is here. Extra colors. You're, you're not using these every day in your everyday palette. Your, um, your your palette that you you use every day this is these, these colors are actually adding to that so if again if you want some really bright looking green this looks beautiful when you want a bright sunny day and you want to paint some beautiful shrubs some trees some grass you want some really bright sunny feeling greens Cadmium Green Pale by Holbein. Holbein Watercolors. That's this brand of the Holbein is the brand, and Cadmium Green Pale is that color. All right, we better take a break. We've been going here for like 20 minutes, uh, almost 20 minutes. I want to take a break, get a little bit of a rest here, sit down. My feet are starting to get a little bit, uh, my feet are starting to bother me a little bit. You know, standing here for 20 minutes or so, I need a little break. Let me sit down in a chair. And uh, we'll come right back though, let's not forget, these are our, our additional colors that we use. We have our everyday palette that we use on a consistent basis, our standard palette, our standard palette, but then we have additional colors and that's what we're covering here. We're doing swatches of additional colors and we still have lots more to go. Don't go away, we're going to come right back and we're going to finish out the video, one more session and put the rest of our additional colors that we use in our palette that we might not use every day, but it's real important that you have some additional colors once in a while that you might need that are gonna really serve you and help you to get that effect you want in your paintings. And we've talked about each of these colors and what they can do and how they work. We're gonna go on and continue and we're gonna get some more colors on our paper here. And we'll talk about how each one is going to really help your watercolor paintings to look much more beautiful because you're in control of your colors. So we'll be right back. And again, thank you so much for tuning in. We'll be right back. Hey everyone, Chris Petri again. We're back. We're having a good time here. We're enjoying ourselves. We're doing some additional colors to our watercolor palette. Hey, it's always good to think about having additional colors in your arsenal so that, you know, when you're in spe you know, specific situations, you can have some really interesting colors that might not be that really readily available in your standard palette. So what I'm saying is, let's say you're out in a really bright sunny day and you're out there and you're out there in the, out in the park or in your backyard or, you know, you're on vacation somewhere and you're painting a beautiful field or some plants or some bushes or some trees and it's really bright and sunny and you look in your palette and you're going, oh my gosh, I don't really have a bright green. Well, that's when you would go to your uh, bright green color that you carry with you. You just take it out and you say, oh, I, perfect timing, cadmium green pale by Holbein. You take that, you put it into your palette, a little, you just squeeze a little spot in your palette like that. You squeeze some into your palette and there you have it. Bright, sunny looking, lively green color. There you go. 
Now you could mix this with your standard palette, but it might not look quite as gorgeous and exciting. That's what I think. So you have that. Now let's keep going here. Well, Payne's Gray, we use that. That's in our standard palette. Sepia, we covered that. We have another sepia tube, we covered that. Ivory Black, I cover. That's in my standard palette, Ivory Black. So I'm just going through my tubes here. Sometimes I have extras in my, my palette. Uh, Rose Matter, we covered that. Chinese White. Chinese White, I didn't cover. Chinese White, excellent color. White, chalky looking white. You could take this and you can um, add some smoky effects to your paintings. So if you want to add some haze or some smoke to your paintings, let's say you, you're thinking of uh, there may be like a um, uh, maybe some uh, like uh, restaurants, things like that, barbecue places, and you want to put some smoke in your places, you, you could do that. You could add some of that. Chinese white with a little bit of water. Or, you know, maybe you also want to put a little bit of uh, uh, haze in a picture. You could take some Chinese white with some water and just put some haze in your picture. Just coat it over the top of your colors to put like a haze in a certain section of your painting, maybe in the distance. You might be able to, you know, a great way to use Chinese white is to add it to your colors that you're painting in your distant colors. So if you're painting your, uh, let's say, a landscape and you want to put some distance and feel of uh, distance and some haze, some atmosphere in your painting, you, you put some Chinese white in your colors. For the distant colors in the back of the painting, let's say you're making your painting like, uh, you know, you have some distant mountains, some distant city buildings, you splash a little Chinese white on there onto your paints, or you mix it into the colors and you have a little bit of that hazy look to it, that chalky hazy look. Chinese white, perfect color to do it. This is Winsor & Newton. Chinese white, I keep this in my extra bag all the time. Great paint to use. Now, let's see what else we have. All right, Aeolian. Now, I believe Aeolian is very, um, it's a, I use mostly cadmium yellows. Aeolian is, I think, a very transparent yellow. And I'm pretty sure we're going to see that here. Let's look at that. Yep. Aeolian. Aeolian is a beautiful transparent gold or yellow color. So you can use this for again flowers, colors of buildings. Um, you can use this for like sunset paintings, for like atmosphere sunsets. But you can see that's a transparent yellow. Beautiful, beautiful yellow. Aeolian yellow. A U R E O L I N, Aeolian yellow. And I keep that with me just as an extra paint to have in my extra paint bag. And let's see what else we have here. Let's see, we have, let's take a look at this one here. Some of these we might just, uh... whoa, look at that. Ooh, that looks exciting. What color is this? This is, I'm trying to find the brand for you. Hmm, this one looks really good. Thalo Green. Thalo Green, everybody. Wow, look at that. Thalo Green is very dark. And then if you thin it out, look at how beautiful that is. Great for s landscapes, seascapes. Look at that. Flower paintings. Whew. That's exciting. And you can really get some darks in there. And this is, uh, uh, the brand of this is Aqua, uh, Centelier. Centelier, yes. I stick to some, st I usually stick to a lot of Mostly, um, I use mostly 
Winsor Newton and also Holbein. Holbein and Winsor Newton are my two favorites brand paints, but also Senelier is great. There's other ones that you know I tend to find in my paint selections, but you can see how gorgeous that is. You can get some really incredible dark tonal values with your Senelier Phthalo Green. And again, perfect for uh, seascapes, landscapes, flowers. It's a cool green. You can see that, right? It's a very cool green. Almost like a Viridian. This is like a st really strong Viridian. Viridian doesn't get to that darker tonal value as this one does, this Thalo green. So you can't get as dark a dark with your Viridian green. So if you needed to go with something that looks like pretty close to a, a Viridian green, but you needed more of a darker dark with your Viridian green, you would go to some phthalo green. Just like that. And there you have it. We are absolutely having a great time here. Are we not having a great time? Extra paints. Hey, whoever thought extra paints? And we're having a fun time with this because this is really important if you want to have some really good dynamics with your paintings and you can't always mix that color you want from your standard palette. You can grab your extra paints and you um, will get your color you need. And I'm light red, light red. So I have two more light reds we have. Rose Matter, we already did that. Lavender, we did that. So we're getting down to the last few here. Chinese White, we did that. Leaf Green, let's try Leaf Green. We're going to put this one up against our other uh, green here. Let me change my water. We have to change the water here in just a second. Okay, I just changed the water out here, my uh, water bucket. I use a large Holbein water bucket like this with a little yellow handle. This is just phenomenal. Large water bucket. It's really and it's collapsible too, so you can squeeze it down and make it real small, throw it in a backpack when you go out and do your plein air painting. I use these in the studio all the time. I use this for my YouTube videos all the time. Large Holbein collapsible water bucket. I think I get this at Blix. Blix has this, I think, online uh, on their website. I use buy a lot of stuff from Blix. And uh, let's see here. Let's keep going. Leaf green. This is Holbein. Leaf green. Wow. Ooh, look at that. Oh, that is gorgeous. C can you see that? Look at how beautiful that looks. Leaf, leaf green by Holbein. Oh. This is like just the greatest color for like trees, bushes. Like that, All right? Look at that. That's a really bright, sunny green for the, your watercolors. If you're doing some trees, bushes, Leaf green is such a beautiful color. I like this one a lot. Leaf green is really incredible. Um, this one looks really beautiful too. We covered that earlier. That was, I think it was a cabinet actually. All right, so I, here we go. Yes, that was a cadmium green pale. That one's a beautiful one too. Cadmium green pale, and this one's just as great. Both Holbein colors. Leaf green by Holbein. Leaf green, incredible. It's like a, a cross between like a green and a, and a yellow. It's like got that really for bushes, tree colors, grass colors, you know, any kind of foliage. Leaf green, beautiful. Cadmium green, pale, gorgeous too. Maybe more of like a, a cloudy day. Maybe your cadmium green pale is your cloudy day greens and your leaf green is your sunny leaf green for your sunny days. You create it. You you imagine it. You create it. You use these colors the way you want to. But I hope you will try these. I hope you will get these colors eventually. You know, take your time however your budget allows. These took me many years to collect up my 
additional colors. I just didn't buy all my paints at one time. You know, I had to save up and buy and purchase my additional colors as I went for years and years. Now I have, you know, I have a, a little extra selection here. Great to have, and these two are just beautiful. Again, cadmium green pale and leaf green. Two gorgeous if you're doing anything. Trees, grasses, bushes, uh, floral paintings with, you know, flowers and all that. Just, just great stuff. Okay, Aeolian, we covered that. We're actually getting there. We're getting there. We're almost completed now with all of our additional colors. Let's see what else I had. Royal Blue. Let's look at this. Royal Blue. I have this in my additional colors. I'm not sure. Royal Blue. Let's see what it looks like. Maybe we'll kind of have a little... Let's have a little fun time here. I'm going to put this out onto the paper, and I want you to guess what color this most looks like according to our normal standard palette. You guys that have been working with me, you gals and guys that have been working with me for years and years, and you use my standard palette, and I know you do, you're, you know, you're following the standard palette I use, most likely. Let's, let's put this blue out on the paper and, and kind of critique it and, and say, what does it actually look like? What, what other blue is this most like? Royal blue. I don't use royal blue a lot, but I do have it in my palette, in my extra. I'm sorry, I don't have it in my standard palette, but I have it in my extra colors. Let's see what, what happens when we put out some royal blue. And we'll, we'll critique this and say, all right, what does this look like? Okay, right away, I see you because I use my standard palette all the time and I stick with my same colors and I'm hoping you're going to do that too and let me just take a quick quick uh, break right now in the action to just make a quick comment if you use a standard palette all the time let's say you use my standard palette which I'm hoping you're going to do using you're using my standard palette all the time I've been using my standard palette for like 15 years now if you take my standard palette and you use my standard palette all the time your eyesight, your brain, your thoughts, it's all going to be connected to your standard palette so that when you look out into nature and you say, oh, look at that beautiful, I'm driving down the road or I'm out shopping out in the countryside and I look at all the colors and I go, oh, there's a, wow, there's an olive green tree. There's a, wow, there's a yellow ochre field and oh, that's a cerulean blue sky. You, you'll notice that all your colors in your palette, your eyes will be so adjusted to the colors of your standard palette that you'll see all those colors out in nature or cars driving by or whatever. Any color, any time you look out and go, oh, that's cobalt blue. Oh, oh, that's French ultramarine blue. Oh, oh, that's cerulean blue. Oh, that's cadmium red. Or, oh, that's, uh, 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 that's uh, rose matter red. Or, oh, that's, uh, um, you know, whatever color it is you'll see it and you'll know it's in your standard palette and you'll be able to relate it to that uh, color in your standard palette. So you'll be looking out in nature and in, in the world around you and you'll see the colors and that'll make sense to you. You'll say, oh yeah, that's a, that's a, you know, yellow ochre. Yeah, that color, yeah, that's cobalt blue. Oh yeah, that's a uh, sap green. So whatever colors you're seeing in your out, outer world, wherever you are, you'll be seeing your standard palette actually. Or you'll be saying, oh, that's pretty close to a uh, Viridian green, but it might be a little bit more toward like the turquoise green. So you'll be able to kind of identify everything. And then if you go out and you start painting on location or you're looking at pictures, you'll be able to figure out exactly what color you need to use. That'll be a huge advantage for you. So I'm hoping that you'll kind of really understand that I'm saying is really important to stick with your standard palette and then you have your extra colors like we're showing here which are just the extra colors that you use once in a while but you don't use them every day and you don't put them into your palette your standard palette you stick with your standard palette so let's stick with this idea and we'll look at this one and say wow royal blue already I can tell you and I think all of you pretty much that have been following me for a while that have been sticking with your standard palettes you're gonna know without a shadow of a doubt what this looks like and pretty much matches almost exactly. Do we have anybody guessing? 
right now and saying, yes, I see what color that is. Holbein Royal Blue, to me, is French Ultramarine Blue. And I bet many of you probably, most of you guessed that right away. Royal Blue Holbein is basically French Ultramarine Blue. It's very close. To me, that's what it looks like. It might look a little more toward the green, which we could say might be Prussian blue. But that really looks like French Ultramarine to me. So there we go. We've learned a little exciting tidbit, another tidbit of information. All right, we're almost done. We got three more colors to go. Let's look at them. Chinese white, we already covered that. Now we're down to two. What else do we have? Prussian blue. I use Prussian blue. That's in my standard palette. But let's, I don't, let's say I'm more, I've been using it a little more often now, but Prussian blue. That's pretty close. Look at that. Pretty close to French ultramarine blue, but that is more toward the green. This royal blue is more toward the uh, red, purple. That's the way I'm seeing it. Someone might disagree with me, but that's how I'm looking at this. And now, Peacock Blue. Oh, this is a great color. Peacock Blue. Holbein Peacock Blue. Let's look at it. I'm telling you, I had someone, I'm going to give you a little tidbit of information in just a second. A little story I have for you. Oh, that looks great. Look at that. This Peacock Blue is incredible. This is Holbein Peacock Blue. Look at how exciting that looks. It's amazing what they do with colors. Okay. Now my little story about this one is, one time I went to an art store and one of the art people at the art store, one of the uh, salespeople, said, oh, you got to try Peacock Blue. And she handed me the tube of paint and said, try this with yellow ochre. and You can't believe the greens you're going to get. And I said, OK. So I tried it, came back home, was in my studio a couple days later, tried it. And it makes incredible greens and blues with Peacock Blue. Let's try it out. I'm going to actually go into my warm colors warm colors. Let's find our yellow ochre. Okay, so I have some yellow ochre here. Let's mix some of that in with our peacock blue and see. And yes, indeed, that is incredible greens. Look at that. Peacock blue, and then some yellow ochre in there. And definitely that looks incredible. Look at that green there. Everyone, thanks so much for coming by, watching, checking out my video here on extra colors in your palette. I'm hoping you're going to actually try out some of these extra colors 
take your time get, getting them. I realize we all have to watch our budgets when we're uh, purchasing our art supplies. They're not easy to uh, purchase sometimes because they're expensive. I totally understand that. And again, it took me many years to get a lot of my paints uh, built up in my supply, built up. So I totally understand that. And um, you will see though that when you add your additional colors to your uh, standard palette once in a while to get interesting variations on what you normally use every day with your everyday palette, your standard palette, you're going to be so happy because you can really sometimes take your paintings to the next level. You can get them really excited. Your, your paintings can get really exciting when you take it to the next level by using some additional colors because sometimes we just can't get that right color when we're working with our standard palette. So I hope you will take me up on this challenge of maybe getting a couple extra paints in your arsenal so that you can create some really beautiful paintings using those additional colors. You can try them out. Again, we went through the whole uh, gamut of additional colors. Sepia, light red, rose matter, lavender. Then we used another color here which is similar to a lavender. We had a turquoise color here. Leaf green. We had a cadmium a green here that was cadmium uh, green pale cadmium green pale aeolian yellow we have phthalo green royal blue peacock blue and then we took the peacock blue and mixed it with yellow ochre to get an incredible green you can just oh you can get such incredible green gr greenish blue colors with your um, uh, peacock blue and some yellow, some uh, uh, yellow ochre, or you could use some raw sienna too probably, that would work pretty well. And then again we used um, some uh, Prussian blue, which we do have in our standard palette, Prussian blue, but uh, we have also, again, royal blue, which is pretty much like French ultramarine blue. So here we tried all our extra colors, we put them out onto the palette, onto the paper, from our palette, from our actually from our paints. I hope you enjoyed this. And again, please subscribe. You know, right hand side down here below, if you hit the subscribe button, we're creating videos like this all the time. We have beautiful new paintings. We're going to cover all kinds of interesting subject matter. We're going to cover some brushes maybe in the future. We'll take some different videos and create some brushes, some videos on brushes, all the different brushes. These are a lot of the flat brushes here. Um, that you can use to create beautiful paintings. You can create beautiful swatches with square brushes and also with your round brush, of course. But again, I'm just excited about watercolor painting. I want you to have excitement with your watercolor paintings. And I definitely want you to try out additional colors in your palette so that you can, again, take advantage of those additional colors and find some other ones, too, of your own that you might... Uh, find through other artists that you might follow or through books or if you might even just decide you want to pick one because you're looking through the um, uh, internet and you find some other colors that you might like whatever it is but these are really I think some really excellent colors to try and I think they're really popular a lot of the professional artists I've gotten these additional colors that I use from professional artists out there that are the top pros in the world right now so I'm not going to get into every, you know, naming off all the people in the list of who those people are. But trust me, if those of you that follow a lot of the pro, pro artists today that are out there, the famous, uh, you know, professional artists, you'll notice that they do put some of these colors into their paintings. And uh, again, that's why I was using them. I started following and putting them into my uh, extra paints on the side. So in case I need to add something in there. You know, I can add some more beautiful, exciting colors into my paintings, and I want you to do the same thing. And again, please subscribe right on the right-hand side down below, so that this way you can follow me each week. We're doing videos every week here, so if you follow me every week, you'll be getting great information about watercolors, your paintings are going to get better, and you're going to be more excited about getting in, interested in your, you know, drawing and painting and your watercolors. So I'm going to grab my brushes, and I'm going to... Uh, 
get going here. I have some more practice to do here in the studio, and uh, I'm just so excited you're here. We'll see you on the next video. Thanks a lot again for subscribing, for following along, and again for uh, all the great comments in the comment section of our uh, YouTube uh, channel here. And uh, we'll be back in just a, as soon as you know, as soon as possible. We'll be back. We'll make some more videos. We'll do some great paintings, and you can follow along. We'll all work together and have some uh, great times together painting. Okay, we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.